Hi, I'm Sarah Forster, Deputy News Editor here at The National, and this is A Closer Look. Our chance to give you the opportunity to take a deeper look into one of our stories as we talk directly to the reporter. Now, DNA profiling has been around since the early 80s, and it was normally used for catching criminals, solving crimes, that sort of thing. But now it's broached into the world of the consumer. So what might you and me use it for? Well, many people use services such as 23andMe and My Ancestry to find out if they're susceptible to certain kinds of illness or disease, or even just to manage their nutrition and their sleep better. Well, the first kind one of these companies has opened here in the UAE now. It's called Dante Labs. It's an Italian company, and it's based in Dubai. We sent our health reporter, Nick Webster, down to find out what his genetics says about him. So we have a small little plastic kit here very similar to uh, a PCR test so, or uh, saliva test you might get uh, for a COVID test perhaps in the UK or elsewhere. Um, it's very simple, um, there's a little tube here with has a buffer solution inside. Now I need to unscrew the top of it and add this funnel which I can then deliver a sample of my saliva to. Um, so once it's screwed on tightly, uh, now I've been told not to brush my teeth uh, for half an hour, eat any food for half an hour as well to make sure the sample is taken correctly. Um, now, this is all ready to go and I've got to get my spit up to this line here, this four milliliter line. So let's give it a whirl. Okay, so the last little bit of spit's gone in there now. Now I need to unscrew the funnel. I'll keep that for later use. And screw the cap back onto the sample. All pretty simple stuff. And then I just shake the collection tube several times. It's taken between two and five minutes to collect that amount of saliva, so it's quite a lot required. Uh, and you shake it several times, pop it back into the plastic casing that it came in, secure it up there, put it back into the box that I received it in, and I'll be sent a Emirates Post prepaid shipping label uh, via email, which I need to print off, attach it to the box, and then they will come and collect it. Well, Nick joins me now to tell us what the results of his report were. Nick, thanks for coming. Hi, Sarah. Um, the first question on my mind was, uh, were you worried about getting a really awful bit, bit of news? I think apprehension is, is normal. I think there's a three-week gap between handing over my test results and getting the report back. So there's always going to be some plenty of time to think about what they might find, what they might come across. But thankfully, um, I had a few of these tests done before, not quite this same clinical grade genomic sequencing test, but other health tests which made me aware of what kind of condition I'm in and, and what I should be ex expecting. But there's always that element of doubt and the nagging thought in the back of your mind thinking, what if they find something else that I don't know about? Mm. But um, it's better to know so I can make any kind of uh, change that I need to, to to compensate for that. That's true. So if someone did get some bad news in their report and it turns out they have a predisposition to developing a terrible um, disease when they're older, what, what then happens after getting that bit of news? Okay, well Dante Labs has got a good support network around the report itself. So uh, like I said, the report is pretty thick. There's a lot of information in there. It's not all in layman's terms. So somebody goes through it with you in detail to explain exactly what it all means, which is very important. Um, and then if you do find something which is really horrible, like a predisposition to cancer perhaps, or mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease or diabetes, they can then go through with it and make sure you're in touch with the right people, the right doctors, to get you the kind of treatment you might need to go forward. Mm -hmm. So being nosy now, as I know people are going to want to know, <laughs> what did your report say? Okay, well it said that I'd, uh, I was likely to get high blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, high cholesterol, uh, and also um, arthritis later in life as well. Mm -hmm. Now I was aware of the high cholesterol, that's a hereditary thing. Um, the arthritis and the high blood pressure were things I wasn't really aware of, so I had to kind of plan for that by changing my diet and making a few tweaks to what I'm already doing to try and compensate for that going forward. So are you a changed man now? Have you implemented every one of the pieces of advice? I wouldn't say a changed man, Sarah. That's very <laughs> difficult to do. But uh, I certainly made a few alterations to what I, what I eat, my diet. Mm -hmm. um, I already exercise quite a bit, but uh, certainly the way I eat and drink can change. Uh, I think I made a few adjustments to that to try and compensate by you know, mm -hmm. bringing things like avocado, more fresh fruit and vegetables, the usual stuff, nuts, mm -hmm. yoghurt, to try and bring my cholesterol down, that kind of thing. Hopefully that'll help. We'll see in the future. I'm sure it will. Um, so one thing that people do get concerned about is data privacy because that's your genetic profile now that a company has. What do Dante Labs say um, to reassure you that, you know, that information isn't going anywhere? 
Okay, well, in the modern age today, we live in an era where data is currency. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a huge, has huge value to companies uh, on social media, how we live our lives. Data is everywhere. And Dante Labs have assured me that the, the information I've given across and they have stored for me mm. is secure. It won't be used by a third party. It won't be given over to insurers so they can push my health premiums up and it'll be kept completely confidential and anonymous so no one can look into it, tap into it mm. and then find out that it's my information. That's the most important thing. All the data I've given across is anonymous. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that you've just gone on the internet and told everyone. Apart from the world that knows I'm going to get arthritis in about 10 years time. But yeah, apart from that, it's anonymous, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you so much, Nick, for, for coming down here and giving us a bit more information about that report. And thank you very much for watching. Please join us next time on The Nationals, A Closer Look.